station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? And stations ready for the event. University of Alabama, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is Stephanie Plum with the University of Alabama. How do you hear me? Hi, Stephanie. Welcome to the uh, International Space Station. I have you loud and clear. Great. Well, thank you so much for the opportunity to speak with you today. I'm just going to dive into the first question. Was becoming an astronaut your goal when you enrolled at the University of Alabama? Yeah, that's a good question. I, uh, I actually, uh, you know, I always dreamed of being an astronaut, but it was just that it was a dream. And my career goals had uh, more to do with uh, aviation uh, and being an Air Force pilot and a test pilot. And so my goals when I enrolled in, uh, you know, in the aerospace engineering program there at Alabama was uh, to further my chances of becoming a test pilot. Uh, and certainly that is a building block along the way to uh, eventually becoming an astronaut. But uh, it was beyond my wildest dreams. Uh, even today, it's beyond my wildest dreams that I get to do something like this. Uh, so, uh, yeah, my, my goal at the time was to become a test pilot. And so getting that engineering degree and that education from Alabama was, uh, you know, a, a key point in that, uh, that path. So eventually you did become an astronaut. How did the University of Alabama play a role in you eventually becoming an astronaut or influence your journey to reach the International Space Station? Well, certainly, you know, furthering your education and continuing to learn is, is a super important part and a skill set that, that all astronauts up, uh, up here possess. Uh, but, you know, there's some of the intangible things that you gain along the way as well. And, you know, those are working uh, as a team, uh, any academic endeavor really takes some level of uh, grit and determination and perseverance to get through it. Uh, and, you, you know, those qualities kind of really enabled, I think, a lot of the, uh, a lot of the things that paved that path for me to be able to, uh, to at least have a chance at becoming an astronaut. Uh, there's also a degree of luck and timing involved uh, in all of that. But certainly, uh, it has given me opportunities that I never would have dreamed possible. And the, the fact that I'm standing here today is certainly a testament to some of the, those opportunities that University of Alabama has offered to me. As the flight engineer on the International Space Station, are you able to use what you learned through the University of Alabama as part of your mission on the space station? A absolutely. Certainly the, you know, the, the perseverance and things like that when things go wrong uh, is certainly a part of that. But uh, one of the other things that, we, that I gained out of my education is a, uh, an, a, a creative approach to problem solving. And, you know, working with all of my wonderful teammates up here, uh, that is certainly something that we have to do when, you know, when we're either uh, fixing things that have broken or some of these science experiments up here and working on them and trying to get them to work uh, uh, the way they're, they're designed to, uh, those creative approaches to problem solving are certainly a, uh, a, an important skill set for us to have. And so absolutely, uh, you know, that experience at University of Alabama has, has been put to good use up here, that's for sure. All right. Now, not everyone who dreams of becoming an astronaut will become an astronaut. You got to reach your dream. But what is your advice to people who are thinking about pursuing graduate degrees to further their careers? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I think having a passion for learning is, is really important and, and continuing to do that and exercise your mind and learning things and staying current and relevant is, is super, super important. Um, for folks that want to become astronauts or aspire to do, uh, do some other things that are, uh, you know, having a far reaching goal like that is, is super important. Uh, but I also encourage them to pursue something that they're passionate about. Don't do it to fill a square because you think it's going to get you to something uh, later just because it's filling a square. Um, for me, it was becoming a pilot. That was something I was passionate about for as long as I can possibly remember. Uh, and that was always uh, what I was pursuing. And, and it, it so happened that that, led, that put me on a path where this opportunity was available. And so I think, you know, regardless of where you actually end up and whether you achieve those super high goals that, that you set for yourself, it's important that you are content and satisfied uh, along the way where you can still be happy. And so finding something that you're passionate about is, is uh, a really important uh, part of that. 
What made you choose your particular graduate program and how did it work for your situation? Well, as I, as I mentioned, I was a pilot in the Air Force and I really wanted to go to test pilot school was one of my, my big goals. And uh, getting a master's degree was a way to uh, further that and really uh, what I felt would make me uh, the best test pilot that I could be uh, if and when I got there. And so that was kind of my goal when I enrolled uh, in the aerospace engineering program there at uh, Alabama. And it, it certainly paid off for me. You know, the, the experiences that I had, the, uh, the research that I got to take part in, and the, uh, the friends that I made, the professors that I had, all of them, you know, helped develop me as a person, uh, both professionally and personally. And to eventually come out uh, on the other side, I think, you know, I, I had the, the opportunity to become a test pilot and, and really, really enjoyed that. And all of that, you know, was, were just building blocks along the way for, uh, you know, to, to get me here to where I am today. And I'm, uh, I'm really grateful for my experience there. All right. When was that moment in your career when you realized you could become an astronaut? This was not just a dream. It could be reality. Yeah, that's a good question, because like, like I said earlier, it was always a dream. It was something that I loved. I always looked up to astronauts, but it didn't necessarily feel attainable because it was just so far out there. Uh, and I was, uh, I think, in the Air Force for maybe six or seven years at that point. I was still trying to apply to test pilot school. And I read Rick Husband's biography, and he was the commander of the uh, Space Shuttle Columbia. And when I uh, read his biography, there are a lot of similarities uh, to the path that I had taken and, um, you know, and the, the pursuits that I, uh, I, have, I have gone on. And so when I saw those similarities, I just realized then that I think that was the first time that astronauts became real to me and that they were just, you know, real people that were passionate about what they did and, and you know, threw their hat in the ring and were able to, uh, to get selected. And so that was where it really became a tangible thing for me. Uh, and, you know, the future applications, then I started throwing my name in the, in the hat. And eventually in 2017, was, uh, was fortunate enough to get selected. All right. Well, you've said before that the first thing you wanted to do when you make it, made it to space was look out the window. What were your thoughts or your impression that first time you got to look out the window in space? Uh, I think it was just wow. I think I just said wow over and over again uh, as we looked out the window. The uh, the very first chance was while we were still in our SpaceX Dragon uh, capsule, and it was right after, uh, well, a little while after uh, engine uh, cutoff, and we had separated from the second stage, and we got out of the seat, and I went over to the window. It was the first place I went, and I looked out, and the second stage was right there, not too far away from us, just floating just below us. And it was so surreal to look down on the Earth, uh, which looks so natural from, from that vantage point, and then see this man-made object flying alongside of you uh, that you know just it, it helped you get to space. Uh, and so seeing that was such a surreal experience. And then looking off into the, uh, you know, that was looking straight down and then looking off to the horizon and seeing the thin blue atmosphere and the, uh, the stark contrast of the life of Earth with the darkness of space was just absolutely incredible. Uh, and then getting up here to the space station and being able to look out the cupola where you see that in a 360 degree field of view is, is just amazing and it never gets old. Bob, thank you so much for speaking with us today with the University of Alabama, and thank you to NASA for making this possible, and roll tide. Absolutely. It was my pleasure, and it was, uh, it was great talking with you. Roll tide. <laughs> Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the University of Alabama portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from WNEP-TV. Station, this is Elizabeth Worthington from WNEP-TV. How do you hear me? Hi, Elizabeth. Welcome aboard the International Space Station. I've got you loud and clear. All right. Thanks so much, Bob. So take me back to your time growing up in northeastern Pennsylvania. Were you a kid at Crestwood saying, when I grow up, I want to be an astronaut? 
Uh, I was a kid who loved the space program. I would have loved to have been an astronaut, but to me it was almost like those guys were superheroes. And uh, it wasn't necessarily something that I saw as attainable until much later in my career. So I followed the space program. I was very passionate about it, and I loved aerospace as a whole. Uh, but my goal was always to be a pilot, and it wasn't until later where I really saw that being an astronaut was actually a possibility. Uh, and so these things that were dre just dreams of mine uh, started to feel more real. And when I, you know, got, got further along in my career, I realized that, hey, there's not a lot of difference between some of these astronauts' backgrounds and, and, what I, and my experiences that I've had. So uh, I was just really, really fortunate. You know, it takes some timing and a little bit of luck uh, as well. And uh, I was fortunate enough to kind of fall into that slot. And, uh, and it's just such a blessing to be up here. Uh, with an amazing crew and amazing views and uh, just really, really enjoying our time up here right now. What do you hope students at Crestwood and just young people from all over our area take away from seeing you achieve your dream? Well, I think, I think just that, that, you know, no matter what your dreams are, uh, that, you know, some hard work, some determination, uh, you keep a lot of doors open for you. And it doesn't always mean that you're going to absolutely 100% achieve everything that you shoot for. But the more doors you open for yourself, the, the higher the, the, those probabilities are. And so, uh, you know, never, never be afraid to go after those dreams. And, and you know, the, st the sky's the limit. And, you know, so just keep shooting for the stars and, and who knows what will happen. So obviously, TV is a very visual medium, so is there anything that you can show us right now visually on board the space station? Oh, wow. Uh, here, I can do a backflip. Uh, I haven't practiced them very much, but uh, I can show you kind of a little bit of the, um, the microgravity up here. Uh, unfortunately, there's no windows in this module right here, so I can't give you a look out the window right now. But uh, here, I'll do my best, uh, best attempt at a backflip here. <laughs> okay, that'd be perfect. Awesome. Now, how many there we go. I didn't bump into done? anything. Awesome. How many backflips have you done since you've been up there? Uh, after that one, after that one, one. <laughs> <laughs> um, so was there anything that surprised you or was different from your expectations once you were up there? Uh, yeah, that's a really good question. There, there's lots of little things in the day-to-day -day life, like how much is required in order to sustain life up here. Uh, every time you turn around, there's something that is just a little bit different that is an absolute requirement. And so the number of those things was kind of a surprise. But I think the biggest thing that is most obvious and most tangible is going and looking out the window. Uh, High-definition video uh, does a lot these days, but it still doesn't hold a candle to what we actually see when we go down to the cupola and we look out the window and we have a 360 degree field of view where we can see the horizon of the earth all the way around. We can see the thin blue uh, line of the atmosphere and then just the spectacular number of colors that are involved in a sunset up here is just amazing. The depth of the oranges and the blues and the purples is just staggering and it, it never gets old. I, I love being down there when the sun sets. And the great thing is we get 16 sunrises and sunsets every day. Yeah, so my next question would be, how difficult is it to be away from, from home and from Earth for that long? Yeah, I think the hardest part really is being away from family uh, for most of that. My uh, one thing that's really important to me when, uh, you know, with all these amazing experiences that I've been fortunate enough to have through the military, through different jobs, uh, and certainly with this, this career here, uh, it's really important for me to be able to share those experiences with people and, and especially my family. And so that's what's hard for me is this incredibly special thing that, that we get to do uh, being up here. Uh, being able to share that and finding a way to share that and, and let others be a part of that is, uh, is a, real, a real challenge. It's, uh, we're fortunate to get to do it, uh, but boy, I wish my family could be up here with me and, and get to see the things that, that we get to see up here. What is one thing that you can think of that someone from down here on Earth might be surprised to learn about what it's actually like to be up in space? Uh, 
That's a uh, that's a good question. I think um, one of the surprising things to me was how quickly the human body adapts to being in zero gravity. Um, you know, after a day or two, uh, there's some fluid shifts that happen in your body, and you get some headaches. And after that, it all feels fairly normal. And you know, you think about floating around on Earth, and it's a very um, just a hard thing to really conceptualize. But once you're up here, within a day or two, it's very natural. Um, I'm not saying I'm good at it. It took me a week or so before I wasn't bouncing off the walls anymore, and you know I, I got better at, at translating around here. Uh, but that adaptability and how quickly and easily the human body adapts to being up here and not thinking in terms of up or down, but just thinking of like which wall are things on and you can reorient yourself in any direction uh, was really amazing to me that you know without a whole lot of effort, uh, my mind and my body really adapted to being up here uh, pretty quickly. And then what kind of work are you actually doing on board the space station? Yeah, so the space station is a national laboratory. And at any given time, we have between 200 and 300 different experiments up here. And so our day-to-day -day activities involve uh, running most of those experiments. And they cover the entire gamut from uh, material science to combustion and studying how combustion and flames behave in zero gravity, uh, all the way to life sciences and biology. Uh, one of the experiments that we have up here now is looking at new ways to stimulate wound healing. Uh, to make wounds heal a little bit faster. We're also looking at uh, new ways to water plants uh, that, you know, maybe for arid places in the uh, uh, back on Earth where plants don't grow naturally, uh, that there are new ways that we can kind of irrigate them or stimulate uh, plant growth. And so there's a lot of different things going on up here. And I think that's one of the most interesting things and the amazing things uh, going on here on Space Station are all the different things that are happening to benefit life down on Earth. And I think Stephanie asked you this question from University of Alabama, but what was your initial reaction when you first looked out that window and just saw Earth down below? Yeah, it was wow. And I just kept saying that over every place I looked, it was just amazing. And uh, and the, the colors, the contrast of all the colors of the uh, of the Earth and the, the contrast with the, the dark, uh, dark of space and the blues and the greens of Earth uh, was just absolutely incredible. Uh, we were still strapped into the seats in the SpaceX capsule and uh, looked out the window and I could see our second stage floating there. And so there was this bright white paint of the second stage with the black engine bell. And at the time we were just flying over uh, over Africa. Uh, and so the the light tan of the Sahara Desert was in the background, and it was just amazing, uh, especially without the, the atmosphere that distorts or mutes some of the colors. Uh, it was just absolutely an amazing sight to see. And, you know, every time I look out the window, that's still, you know, kind of where I go. It's just my thought is, wow. Last question. If there's one thing aside from people or your family that you could take on board with you, whether it be a food or an item, what would it be? Oh, that's a toss-up. I would have to go with uh, pizza or some homemade pierogies. Uh, my family makes some uh, amazing pierogies, and I would I would love to have some of those up here. But uh, it turns out I think they would make a big, giant mess. But uh, if there's a way to make that happen, uh, I'm all for it. We'll see what we can do. All right, thank you so much, Bob. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk with me. Awesome. Well, thanks so much. It was nice talking with you. Take care. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you. Thank you to all participants from the University of Alabama and WNEP-TV. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.